Welcome to Digital Asset News. I get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, a lot of stuff to go over, so let's break right in. So first up, three reasons why MicroStrategy adopted Bitcoin and why others will too. This is a pretty good story, especially about institutions breaking in and why all the big corporations and entities are FOMOing into Bitcoin also. Unstoppable Domains is giving away the domain of hodl.crypto plus $7,000 in Ethereum and DAI. And I'm going to show you how to enter. There's actually a lot more to the story, uh, which goes back to the Coinbase wallet all the way back in 2018 and how I was actually blown away by the forward thinking of Coinbase. Even though they're forward thinking, they can also be a little petty. And this is a story which talks about Coinbase exits trade group following entry of rival Binance.us. This is the cheese mate for the day. And lastly, we'll go over question of the day, which is brought to us by Yong. So let's break in. So first up, let's take a look at what's going on with the market. So today it is August 13th. It's around 3 p.m. Texas time. And uh, everything's staying pretty stable. Uh, Bitcoin almost 11.7, uh, pretty much what it was yesterday, 1.4%. Ethereum broke through that $400 barrier, and now it's busting out to 413. Where can we see it go? I don't know, but there was a lot of resistance at the $400 mark, and here we are, so I expect to see big things, but we will see. Speaking of not so big things, XRP, watch out, 28 cents. Tether is uh, gangbusters at $1.01, but Tether's Tether. Uh, Chainlink uh, still up 11.4% for 24 hours, and seven day up 81%, but I believe it was up to almost $18, uh, so here we are at 17.30, so who knows what could happen. Uh, Bitcoin Cash up, Cardano up, everything's up. Uh, uh, looks like a pretty good day. Tron, for some reason, 11%, sure. And then uh, VeChain, everything else, pretty much in the two, oh, 8% for Maker. And uh, Compound, ouchie, down for 10%, but still up 46%. So a lot of good things happening around. Let's see if we can keep this momentum, but let's break in today's top story. So first up, three reasons why MicroStrategy adopted Bitcoin and why others will too. And I got to tell you, um, it wasn't just about that MicroStrategy did this, how they bought you know thousands of Bitcoin and they're going to owe 0.1% of all Bitcoin ever produced, uh, but it's what the CEO said and his conviction to it. So let's uh, jump right in. What's going on here? So MicroStrategy has adopted Bitcoin as its reserve currency and stunned commentators by purchasing over 21,000 Bitcoin on August 11th. That's a pretty good amount. The world's largest publicly traded business intelligence company has swapped fiat for Bitcoin as its treasury reserve asset, but the reasons behind it suggest that more big businesses will have no choice but do the same. And this is a story we we covered, gosh, I want to say four or five days ago, and it was just you know the CEO saying, hey, we got a lot of reserve currency, and we're looking at alternative investments, and one of those was uh, Bitcoin. I think they talked about gold and silver and some other things, and I was like, yeah, sure, they'll get around to it. They're a big corporation. They'll never you know, pull the trigger this fast. Here I am wrong again, and uh, they pull the trigger, and bam, here we are, uh, them buying up it up like crazy. So uh, on August 11th, CEO Michael Saylor called Bitcoin digital gold. And it wasn't that he actually just called it digital gold. It was just the conviction behind it. And it, said, it talks about here, no ifs or buts, like it could be digital gold if it does this, or it might do this if it does that. He's like, no, Bitcoin is digital gold. It's harder, stronger, faster, and smarter than any money that has preceded it. And uh, I'm like, man, Kiwi was that's pretty good. I mean, I like this guy's style. Uh, he comes out there with guns blazing, and he says what he's what he thinks, and uh, that's what it is. Sailor also believes that Bitcoin's very structure will ensure that its value will only increase with time. He states, we expect its value to accrete or grow with advances in technology, expanding adoption, and the network effect that has fueled the rise of so many category killers in the modern era. So this company purchased 21,000. 454 Bitcoin for a price of around a paltry 250 million uh, late last month. May not only be some symbolic, but it also means the company controls, like we talked about, 0.1% of total Bitcoin supply. And that's something that the competitors moving forward will find uh, almost impossible to replicate. Because look, uh, Bitcoin right now is, like we just talked about, hovering around 11.7, 11, 11, something like that. Can you imagine what it's going to be in one year or two years' time? Um, now, no one knows. It could be down to 3,000. But uh, if history is any any predictor, we could see some rapid uh, growth. So uh, for the competitors to uh, duplicate that, very tough. For Sailor, there were multiple red flags that swayed him to turn to Bitcoin. And he states, among other things, the economic and public health crisis precipitated by COVID-19, 
unprecedented government financial stimulus measures, including quantitative easing adopted around the world, and global political and economic uncertainty. And I got to tell you, some people make it so confusing uh, about why Bitcoin goes up. Well, it's because of this this metric and that metric and, and these things. And I, I just look at it, I'm like, I think it's pretty simple. Um, with all the uh, the money printing, all the quantitative easing, all, and just like it says, you know, just this this pandemic that's going on, whether you believe it exists or not, uh, it still uh, plays havoc with the economy. There's a lot of uncertainty, and it just makes sense that uh, different assets, alternative assets like Bitcoin, gold, silver, would go up, and that only makes sense. Now, as uh, and I think what we've seen it is as things have turned around, like there was a, a talk of a Russian vaccine. <laughs> I guess, uh, so, and it, you, you saw prices tumble. And as the economy does better, I think it might tumble a little bit, uh, but it will always, you know, go forward. But I think that was a driving factor, and I can understand why he talks about that. But uh, further on, he states, we believe that together, these other factors may well have a significant depreciating effect on the long-term real value of fiat currencies and many other conventional asset types, including many of the assets traditionally held as part of corporate treasury operations. And if you've listened to Mike Maloney, he's a, he's a pretty, he's a big gold bug. He always talks about Bitcoin. In, in one of his videos, and I'll try to link at the end, he talks about how all fiat currencies for the entire existence of man has gone to zero at some point. All of all of these fiat currencies gone to zero. So when we see something like this, we're like, maybe this is the beginning of the destruction of uh, fiat currency. Now, I'm not a big doomsayer and things like that. I don't think it's, uh, you know, the world reserve of currencies is gonna go away, but there are instances of a faltering and I can definitely see that happening. But to finish this off, Jason Yanowitz, founder of financial media network Blockworks Group, uh, states Microsoft CEO said they bought Bitcoin to avoid inflation. And he further states, eventually every public company will do the same. And can you imagine that? All these different companies getting into it and going, wow, we really, really need to get in this. And, I, and for me, this is why I have invested into Bitcoin and digital assets and cryptocurrencies. And all you have to do, just to keep it simple, look look around who is buying this up. Look around who is FOMOing it. Not, not just FOMOing, but just getting in. So if you look at institutions, I mean, look no farther than Fidelity with their two, three trillion, or I think it's eight trillion assets under management, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Ameritrade, one trillion assets under management. Uh, you got Van Eck, who are huge gold bugs. And just in January of this year, uh, they put out uh, this little article or this little presentation that talked about how great uh, or Bitcoin is compared to gold. And they gave seven to eight different reasons. And that's why they're picking up Bitcoin over gold now. Also, you got the big guys, Grayscale. This is just the Q1 2020 report um, where they say, look, we have 2.2 billion assets under management. Now, in just a very short amount of time, they're over four and a half. So they are doing amazing things, not to mention the majority of investments or 88% came from institutional investors dominated by hedge funds. And then you have somebody like uh, Paul Tudor Jones, who just recently, uh, which, which they have 21 billion assets under management, just a little bit, not too much. Um, but this Paul Tudor Jones guy, uh, as of May 8th, 2020, he states he's going to put 2% of total investments into Bitcoin futures. If you know who Paul Tudor Jones is, he's like one of those one of those um, legends of Wall Street that made a killing uh, back in the heyday in 80s and 90s. And when you got somebody like that, uh, who says, you know what, Bitcoin could be the future. Um, you got a lot of the other people taking notice. And then we see what's happening here with MicroStrategy. And I, I, I was looking at MicroStrategy because I, want to, I wanted to save their website. But what was interesting to me about them is that it states here, MicroStrategy is a company that provides business intelligence, mobile software, cloud-based services, uh, found in 1989. The firm develops software to analyze internal and external data in order to make business decisions and develop mobile apps. What do you want to bet? They didn't use all the analytics that they had at their disposal and say, you know what, we crunch all this data and we're looking at Bitcoin and it's a real winner. Not only is it a real winner, um, we're not going to say ifs and buts about it. We're going to say it is the winner. So uh, that is one of the reasons why uh, I have invested into Bitcoin, digital assets and cryptocurrencies. All right, let's move on.